Hello everybody, I'd like to welcome you to my YouTube channel. This is Steve coming back with another video for your enjoyment. Um, so I've gotten a few questions on this and I had to sit there and play with it and try to understand how to save an Altera. It was driving me nuts. I could not figure it out. I was trying to attach images, you know, like it's done on the Commodore 64. I tried to create like different disk drive directories. And, uh, it was driving me crazy. Finally occurred to me, Anytime you create a new ATR image, you actually have to format it. <laughs> it was so simple, but right under my nose, I just didn't get it. But anyways, I'm going to show you how to do that in this video, and we'll go into some more stuff with Mac 65. So I hope you guys enjoy this video, and sit tight, and yeah, well, let's get that started. Okay, guys, I'm back, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to load Altera. I'm just going to load it here from my thing. Now, it's basically not booting right here. So what you got to do first, is you have to go to boot image, and what we have to think of, like you're sitting in front of a Atari computer. Let me pause for a minute. Okay, I pause there for a second. So you're going to get the boot error at first. What you have to do is you have to go here, and you have to set this boot image to your uh, DOS. Now you can get these files online. I've had these on my computers for years. So this is DOS 25.xfd. I know this one loads up at uh, 130XC RAM disk, but it'll still work the same. Now, if you go and you type B here, it's going to say there's no cartridge attached inside of DOS. What you have to do is you have to go ahead and, and use File Attach Cartridge. And I have a Mac 65 um, cartridge attached right here, which is what I wanted to show you. So before we go into this, I wanted to give you a visual example of what's going on with the emulator here. Now, you saw earlier where I was attaching the, the boot image. The boot image is your DOS disk. So think of it that way. What you're doing is, and I don't have this turned on or any of us want to demonstrate. It's just like putting your disk in the drive like that, for example, that would be your boot image because it's going to boot up the DOS image. It's got to always boot up DOS first to be able to write to the, the diskette and the sectors on the diskette. Now, once you have your disk image, so let's pretend, and I'll just leave that in there, actually. I'll put it in there, for example. Leave it in there, for example, like that. Move that over here a little bit. We've got our, our image in there, right? Now, we've got our Atari computer, and what we have to do is we're going to attach our cartridge, which is backwards here, the Mac 65 cartridge. So pretend your, dust, your computer's on, you're attaching your cartridge. Now you have your DOS loaded, and you have your cartridge image in it, which is why you're going to attach the cartridge next. So let's go back to the Max 65 example. So hopefully that's making sense to you. So what I'm doing now on the second step is I'm attaching the Max 65 image here. And you'll notice it instantly boots back into Max 65 here. Now if we can go back to DOS. Like I said, we put the DOS disk in. We're now in DOS. And if we type in A, we can now see that we can access what's on that disk. Now, currently what you're looking at is everything just pulling up on the DOS diskette, or the ATR image in this case. Um, what we want to do is we want to be able to format our own so that we can create our own disk. Now, the only way I found out to get around this after playing with it for a while was setting the disk drive to the, the image that I need to boot. And then from there, basically creating and formatting that disk that I can use to write programs onto. So let me show you what I mean here. So I'm just looking at my example here. So we're going to go over here to uh, disk drives. Blah. Backward. So forget that. We're going to go back here and we're going to create a disk image instead. We're just going to reset this one and then we can go back here and hit this little plus sign. And this is going to do something called creating a new disk. Now creating a new disk doesn't mean you can use it yet. In this example you have to create it and then you actually have to format it. It's like buying a diskette in the store. Think of it like you, you, know, you got your diskette, buying a diskette in the store and then you have to go format it. So we're going to create the new diskette. Now we notice it will say new disk virtual rewrite so we can write on this disk and then if you want to go here you can name it <clears throat> I just go and click on the save option here <clears throat> I used this one earlier so I'm just going to use a, a example like maybe um, Steve's disk or something like that and then it'll automatically default to ATR you don't have to change this to ATR but you can go like that it'll still save it as a disk image um, make sure I spell that right Steve disk or Steve's disk ATR Okay, now that we've saved the image, you'll go back up here in your disk drive, and you'll see if you kind of move it over here or highlight a little bit, you can see it's showing stevedisk.atr, rewritable, everything. We've got it saved. we got it set to rewrite. And just hit OK here. Now if we go to type in A, watch. 
you'll see it says free sectors. When I first saw this, I'm like, zero, zero free sectors. And I tried saving over and over to this, and I kept getting error 143, 144, and just weird error messages. I'm like, what's going on? You know, and finally it occurred to me that I needed to look up this a little bit more. So when I researched those errors, I found out what it's not doing is it's not able to read that as a DOS formatted disk. So this is exactly why we're formatting it for DOS, which is the next step we're going to do. So we're going to go here and we're going to type in I for format, 1 comma 1 because we're formatting the disk, drive 1, and you just type in Y, it'll take a second here. Now, if I type in A, you'll notice it now shows 999 plus free sectors. That means it's successfully formatted our disk. And I'll prove it here in just a minute. I can show you that that is working there. So you can hit enter there. We can go back to B here. We can go back to DOS. Just to show you, it's still there. Now, we're just going to write a simple little program in uh, Mac 65. What does it say? Change or color, order change or something like that. Real simple. Whoops. And we're going to set it just to um, a safe memory location. Oops, I need to do asterisk. And the, com the little semicolon there is just for a comment, by the way. We just um, tab over here. We're just going to pick um, a memory location to save it in. And we're going to save this to 0 to, is it C8, I think? You can type, yeah, 0 to C8 for the the border color, and I'm going to hit my clear by holding uh, control and home so I can kind of clear the screen there. You'll see now we have a program saved. Um, oh, I forgot to do one more thing. OPT.OBJ. So you want to make sure it's saved. The object code is in memory. You type in ASM, and it now has assembled it into memory here. And if we go to DDT here, and I tip asterisk, um, set the program counter. The asterisk, by the way, is the program counter. It's just where the program is locating it in memory where you're going to start writing the code and the computer will see it line by line. So it's setting it in hex 8000 and you can see as soon as I type in hex 8000 immediately it showed up here. Oh I forgot to hit enter, excuse me. It immediately it'll show here at the top. You can now see our program here. D7, this is in hex and 02C8 and that's basically loading the border. If we go to asterisk for example you'll see it change the border color. So it's definitely working here. Now all we have to do is save it, and remember, if we want to see where it's saved, let's say we forgot, and go back to disk drive here, you can still see it saved on this one, just in case you had multiple images here. I'm just going to save it to D1 here. Say D1, and I'll just call it, um, I don't know, color, M65, and there it's saved. Um, it may not look like it's saved, so we'll go to DOS here, and I'll show you that it's saved, and we'll type in A, and demo. There it is. Now we're going to reload it. And it's still in memory, so it doesn't it doesn't, it doesn't wipe it out here. So we're going to reload it. And there we go. Now we're good to go. We can start writing all our programs and stuff like that. Um, and just having some fun. I just wanted to um, show you this video because somebody was asking about how to save it. Now we could go in here and we can write any other programs. Um, let's just say I wanted to create a whole new program or something. I think I know what I'll do here. I got a copy over here of the, the screen capture. I'm just going to go ahead and pull that up here real quick and just copy that over. I got the code over here, so I'm just going to copy that in memory. And this one, is going to be a clear background or a clear screen or fill screen, excuse me, clear screen, fill screen. I'm just using these little asterisks just for fanciness. Now we're going to set our program counter. Asterisk equals a thousand. I always just leave extra spaces, and that's just the way I am. Now we'll start writing in our code here. Now, I'm writing this without any labels, so excuse me on this, just for simplicity. But we could throw in labels. Always a good idea to throw in labels. But We're using two safe memory locations, 0 and 1, are safe to use for high and low bytes. And high and low bytes are going to, remember, get that 
lower part of memory that goes from 0 to 255 and anything beyond that gets added to the carry so that we can obtain the next byte beyond that, which would be 256 and on. So anyways, um, we're going to load in the accumulator immediate value of 33. We're going to load the x reader immediate value, which basically loads a whole number at 4. It actually will look at any number between 0 and 4 when you do a load x number 4, but it's actually set an immediate value of 4 there, so it will look at 4. And now we're going to set our first label here in the program. A label, if you remember, is a way of it addressing the memory location at that address. So basically it just counts the 8,000 here. And I'll show you when I assemble it here. It just looks at it line by line by line. And each of these is made up of so many different um, bytes. And this, for example, would be two bytes. This is uh, two bytes. This is uh, two bytes and so on. And that's how it's basically looking at it. This would be just a one byte for the memory location. So it's looking at this line right here. And you could call it anything you want within reason, of course. And then we're going to load the cumulative Y. That just sets it to zero, but you can set them any value between zero to 255, and X can also be zero to 255. And then next, we're going to set LP for kind of a loop label. I just short, short for LP. We're going to store it in the zero that we used earlier, because remembering, I'll go back up here and show you. This is basically access and screen memory. This is getting what's called the low significant byte of screen memory. And then this one, if I don't have these reversed again, is the most significant byte or the high byte of screen memory. And then we'll go back down here to our an increment y. Now, but it basically increment y, which means as it starts at 0, if you increment y, it'll go to 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 255, or however high you connect it to. You can actually control how far you want it to go. Um, but it'll never be anywhere below 0 and never above 255. So just remember that. Now we're going to increment 1, which means we're going to increment inside of 1 here. Now, if you notice earlier, we did save 1 into the most significant byte of screen memory. So this is going to allow it to access the next byte in memory to basically get the high bytes in memory so we can start creating our screen. And I'll show you when I run the program here what that means here in a minute. If you're still confused by this after video, watch the Hangout tonight. Hangout, I mean the, um, the Twitch tonight. And I'll go in more detail about screen memory and stuff like that. Hopefully I don't forget. But anyways, there's our program there. Now I'm going to save it just to be on the safe side here. And was it D2 again? I think it was D2. Or was it D1? Let me just... It's D1. It's D1. Okay. That's right. I overrided it. D, D1. You need to save it to D, D1 or whatever. I'd say D1. And then we'll call it um, clear screen. Now it's saved. Now we're assemble. And I'll show you what I was talking about. You see as it symbols here, it creates these little lines next to it. You see, I mean, excuse me, these hex numbers. These are basically referencing this. This load the Y and this zero is made up of this A0 and this 0, 0. You see the 0 for the 0. And this is hex for 9100, which makes up the store command for the 0. And it gets it registered 0, so it's going to show 0. This is C8, which is one single command for increment Y. D0 FB is for this one, and then FB is the LP. E601, you can see the 0, 1 there. Um, CA is just one single command for decrement X, and that's basically how the compiler loads everything into memory. And if you think of it as basic, you remember basic those data statements, it just loads in those machine language commands into memory that the computer sees these codes in memory to run a set of instructions. Okay, so everything's good. We got it assembled, and we got it saved. We can go to DDT, Dunian's debugging tool. And now you can see the program loaded up on the screen here. So if I did everything correctly, <clears throat> it should fill the screen with a bunch of asterisks. You didn't see them here, but you saw it go to break. It's basically exited back out into Mac 65. But if we type in the Q key to quit, you can now see the screen is filled with a bunch of A's. You can also do some pretty cool stuff here. You could transfer X to the accumulator instead of setting 0. Let me see. Um, let's see. We'll probably have to do it... I think we'd have to put one down here. Okay, I'm back, guys. That was really weird. I must have done something wrong in that program. Um, but you can now see that they're loaded in memory here. I went back to DOS to show you. So if we go here, um, click on the screen here. We set B back to cartridge to get back to Mac 65. We can list it. See, there's nothing there. But I can load it back into memory. Um, it was CLRCR to N65. And there's our program. Um, 
So I think I put the X down in here, and I probably shouldn't have done that. I was trying to make it read in a bunch of values. I should have just did TYA or something like that. Because um, what it was doing, it was basically going back here to the load Y, and it was never changing the X register, I don't think. Yeah, it was never going back here to change the X register. So I think we could have probably done TYA. Let's see if that'll work. So I'm transferring why I didn't have to save my value. Okay, that's kind of weird. So go back to L0175, TYA. Blows up this time and blows up whatever. There it goes. That's what I was trying to show you. So basically what it's doing now is it's just showing you all the character set on the screen. So it took TYA and it just copied it over and over to the screen. So what this is doing essentially is it's taking Y and as we're incrementing Y, it's changing it value each time and loading the value of that to get the next character, next character, next character on. And it keeps repeating over and over again since the screen is is not it's bigger than 255 characters. The screen is, um, what is it, like 40 times 25? Oops, why, why did I do that? I didn't mean to do that, excuse me. Well, anyways, um, let me just list these lines out here for a second. Here's how you list several lines in a row one, if the case you're curious. So I'm just going to go back here and pre fill this in. Or fill screen. And up here, if we do OPT, OBJ, if you're curious, we can always go back here and then type comma no list. So it doesn't show a listing when we assemble it. In case you have a ton and ton of lines and want to get through it real quickly, you could also set it to list certain lines and stuff like that. But, anyways, um, as I run this again, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Set the program counter, go to asterisk. You're typing in G and you're pressing the asterisk key, by the way. And you're pressing the Q key to get out. And there's what it's doing it's taking the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way up to 255. Once it hits 255, which is going to be something like this, it starts over again. It just keeps going on and on until it fills the entire screen, which is why I was going to pull up my calculator earlier to show you. It might be, is it 40 times 25? Yeah, I think that's it, 1,000. So basically, it's, it's pre-filling the screen over and over. Oops, what I said was? 5 by 255. 3, 255 times 3, right? There's something right here. So essentially, it's, it's actually like 255 times 3 plus so many because of how big the screen is. But anyways, that's what it's doing is it's filling the whole screen. Um, this is probably a little confusing to people who don't follow machine language, but what it's doing basically is just defining a point here in screen memory. If you remember in, in basic, for example, if I switch to basic here, for example, um, I'm not in basic, but I just wanted to show you what it would look like in basic. It'd be like this. It'll give me an error, but I just wanted to at least show you right there. That would be a basic command, and then if you printed P in basic, it would print a number that shows where screen memory is located. So that's all I'm going to do for this video. So anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, short video showing you how to go ahead and save programs in the Altera and load them. Um, thanks for bearing with me on the patience of trying to get this to work and some of the issues I've had with this program. But now that I know how to do it, we can go on and save a lot more programs and have a lot more fun and just start exploring more things with the Atari computer. Uh, be sure to watch me tonight at Twitch Hangout. I'm going to try to be there probably on around 12 or 12.30. I did put 12.30, so I'll try to be consistent with that. Look forward to seeing you guys, and you guys have a great day until then. Thanks for watching.